Hey, it's Sigboy from the Gaming Analyst Collective, and as a follow-up from my previous video, I wanted to talk about what the bottleneck of the Xbox is, and why it is genuinely a concern to consumers, and how Microsoft are using their financial position in order to bully you into a future that is not necessary in order to enhance their flagging profits. Now, in my previous video, I showed that the Xbox division is actually losing two billion dollars a year. I'm not going to talk about that anymore. Go watch the other video if you haven't. Now, the bottleneck that has been being talked about quite a lot with the Xbox One, that it can often only output lower resolutions than the, than the PlayStation 4. So for example they had with Call of Duty Ghosts, 720 upscale to 1080 on the Xbox One, native 1080 on the PlayStation 4. Now, the powers in general on paper look roughly equivalent. And there's been a lot of talk as to the fact that the PlayStation 4 is a substantially more powerful machine, despite the fact that, on a rough glance, they look roughly similar. Now, the grounds of that comes down to the ES RAM, the 32 gig of ES RAM that they're utilizing in the machine. Now, that should be able if it was just only doing textures, should be able to output native 1080p high resolution textures. Now this is an issue that happened with the Xbox 360 as well, that it actually was being uh, utilised in such a way that they actually had to choose where the, uh, the, the, the in the actual visual spectrum, where the higher rendering would take place. So issues like the sky would be lower resolution and the ground would be higher where most of the textures tend to be. So they would do a great, a large amount of jiggery pokery in order to create the illusion of a consistent resolution output. Okay. Now, given that this is the, f the console isn't even on the market yet, the first games are being developed. Now, traditionally, the first games tend to not touch the power of the machine. If you look at early Xbox 360 games like Hitman Blood Money, Hitman Blood Money looks like a piece of shite on the Xbox 360 now. However, it was also in exactly the same form playable on the PlayStation 2, which was a far less powerful machine than the 360. So clearly, and you can see if you compare Absolution to Blood Money, although Blood Money is the better game, if you look at the overall fidelity of the game, Absolution blows it out the water. So you can see that there is room for improvement. Now, with regards to the Xbox One, it appears that there needs to be a great amount of jiggery pokery from day one in order to make a game that isn't even high def. Now, in some cases, I believe Rise is coming out at 900p. Actually, no, sorry, that's Battlefield the PlayStation 4. Um, there are some games coming out at 1080p and most of them are being digitally upscaled. Now, they're digitally upscaling it in order because that there is a bottleneck in the system, and that's the ES RAM. Now, why have Microsoft done this? Why would they release a machine that has clearly limited processing power in order to create graphical fidelity? Why would they do that? Now, what do Microsoft talk about a lot? The power of the cloud. The power of the cloud! The power of the cloud has been touted by Microsoft time and time and time again. We can create massively higher resolution textures using processing power from the cloud. Okay, so this 32 gig of ES RAM is there because it means that the console requires cloud processing in order to function at high def resolutions. Now think about that. Now I mentioned in my previous video that they have a huge decrease in their money. In fact that the Xbox division is losing $2 billion a year, which is made up for by the Android patents. Okay, so what they need is they need you to be online. The reason they need you to be online is for advertising. Because when your Xbox 360 say is not connected online, they are not making ad revenue from that. If you're online all of the time, they can charge ad space. If you're using the TV streamed through your Xbox, you um, they are making ad revenue from you. If you have to play your game online and have to process it through the cloud, you have to be online, they can make ad revenue off you. 
That is why they are doing it. Don't think for one second that the Xbox One is designed architecturally to be the greatest machine available. It's not. It clearly seems that this machine is intentionally gimped in order to force you to utilize their vast amount of servers that they have. They advertised a vast amount of dedicated servers in order to run the cloud, and this is why. They want you to have to offload processing power to their cloud so they can rinse you for every fucking penny they can get. Just something for you guys to bear in mind. Somewhat of a fairly sinister, perhaps a bit conspiracy theory-ish. However, if you've got another alternative solution for why these things are happening, why this course of events seems to look this way, and I had no intention when I got up this morning of taking some news stories that I would have stuck in the anarchic eye and do them as separate little videos to kind of cover something that I really do feel is a shifty business practice entirely designed to fuck you because all you are are little eyeballs for their adverts. Think about it, read it up, tell me what you think, agree with me, disagree with me, I don't really mind, but think for yourself and consider, are you getting good quality for your money?